Hello and welcome to this Christadelphian Youth Network video. My name is Josiah Legg. I belong to the Gorsine and Christadelphian Ecclesia in South Wales. And today I have the privilege of interviewing my friend, Justin Rich, also a Christadelphian from Simi Valley, California. Now, the reason why I'm excited to have this interview with Justin is that Justin didn't grow up as a believer. He wasn't born into a religious family, but came into the truth from outside. So I'm going to interview Justin and find out about his journey of discovering the truth concerning God, Jesus Christ, and God's word, the Bible. So Justin, first of all, tell us a bit about your background in general. I just want to say thank you, Josiah, for this opportunity. And as you mentioned, I'm from Simi Valley, California. I've lived here my entire life for the last 25 years. And my background is I grew up in a household that wasn't religious. I live with my mom, my grandma, and grandpa. And that was just us the entire time, at least most of my life. And there was no religious background with my mom and my grandma. My grandpa did grow up and did have a Jewish background, but he didn't have as much as that belief when he grew up. So he didn't go to church on the weekend or live a religious life. He just grew up Jewish. So through the age of nine, I grew up not having religious background myself. And I eventually came in when I was around nine years old through my aunt and uncle, which was my mom's brother, and I came in through them when we eventually moved in with them for a little while. So could you describe for us your journey of discovering the truth? Uh, what, what was the starting point for you? So like I mentioned, when I was around nine years old, I moved in with my aunt and uncle, or our family did because we lost our house. And when I moved in with them, I was young, still going to elementary school. I was a kid who played on the playground with other kids. And I didn't really have anticipation of searching for the truth or religion. But I did have questions, as my aunt and uncle did go on Sunday mornings to Sunday school and memorial service. So they were gone every Sunday morning. And when I was younger at school, kids would talk about their different beliefs that they had. So it kind of sparked some questions. And then eventually my aunt and uncle asked if I wanted to come along one day. And I said, sure, why not? And when I did come that day, I decided I should continue coming along and see what it's like because everyone was really welcoming and seemed like a good place to enjoy so I continued to come along because how welcoming everyone was and I figured why not there's no harm in it and from there that's what started my path was just starting to go on Sundays with family who were part of the truth and to make sure to just keep going and to keep learning. Would you say that there were any challenges that you faced? The immediate challenge would be the household that I lived in not being religious, being the different way of life that they lived versus the way of life that I was learning to live as I started coming around. So the way that the world lives its life of entertainment versus the way we live religiously of studying the Bible and making sure to spend our time dedicated to that. So that did make it a bit harder as well, as well as when I started coming around for a few years, there was a year where I stopped coming around because of, of probably that religious background not being in the household and some issues arising there. So there's a year where I went to public school and that year was tough because I wasn't around people that I was starting to know really well anymore. And I was tossed out into this big school and there that year I got bullied physically. I got 
bullied verbally and I thought that was a really tough year and I found I really tr- kept asking I want to go back I want to go back and eventually I was able to go back my family actually just randomly came over one time and tried to get me to come back so they didn't even tell us they were coming over they just said we're going to get you to come back and eventually I went to our vacation bible school in the summer and I found out there was a Christadelphian school here for all the children. So I applied and got accepted to go there. And that was the start of what really got me to come back and to get through these challenges of seeing the world and having family that's not religious. And I guess that would have been a big, uh, big influence on you. Were there any other influences that you'd be able to identify? The influences were those that I got close with. There were families that I got close with who brought me along the way to make sure that I was coming to things, kind of got close to me and helping me along the way. So there were families who would help financially when we need help because obviously the school is funding, so you have to pay tuition. So if there was a struggle there, they would help with that. They would help to make sure that I went to different events like youth camps and things like that so those that were close to my aunt and uncle that they knew came close to me and those were a positive influence on me to keep coming around to be keep that encouragement of studying god's word and what would you say were the biggest changes in your life as a result of your interest in the truth One of the biggest changes was when I went to public school in fourth grade in that year that I didn't come around and I saw that way of the world thinking of people thinking about themselves, bullying others, and the things that they always talked about, like the crazy video games that they played or the movies that they saw. And that made me realize I need to go back to the way that I was learning to live life God's word of making sure to study dedicated to God's word rather than living life in my own pleasures, making sure to study God's word, to be encouraged by that, to keep encouraged by that future hope we have. So that was one thing. And then another thing I mentioned is when we, when I was younger and I lost my house, that was a starting point, I think, for life later on because when I was 13, my grandpa passed away so we had to move quite a few times because of low income so we stayed with a few different families and coming into the truth and in that similar circumstance when I was younger helped prepare me for the future and having that right mindset of realizing that we're always growing and the only way to grow is through hard times and making mistakes because if life was perfect it would be smooth sailing and there would be nothing to learn from so because of the circumstance that I went through multiple times of having moved when I was younger and when I grew up older when I was starting to discover that truth really and get into it that helped me to see the comfort that we have in the scripture of that future hope the comfort of those who I got close to those families helping me making sure I got around, make sure I had a place to stay, food to eat. That encouraged me to continue to learn the scripture and to see that there is a God in our life helping us to grow. Absolutely. So what advice would you then give to those wishing to spread the gospel? For those wishing to spread the gospel, I would make sure that when teaching, because we teach a lot of different things of what we believe, making sure people can get connected with scripture like I did, whether it be through life's circumstances and helping them to connect to the scripture through the circumstances that they're living in life or while they're studying, make sure that they can be shown that the scripture is true connecting scripture with scripture 
making sure that not just teaching everything of this is what we believe, why we believe it, but showing this is how this part of scripture connects with this scripture. So like looking at the examples of Paul and how he quotes the Old Testament, how the writers of the Gospels quote the Old Testament, showing that the book is a truly inspired book of God and that it is true scripture and not just a bunch of written stories put together, but it all reflects each other. And finally, what advice would you give to those who are seeking God, those who are seeking the truth? For those seeking God, make sure to be open to what happens. It's not going to be a quick, easy thing. For me, it involved leaving for a little while and coming back. So make sure you connect with the things going on in your life. Allow yourself to see what happens in your life and to go through that and to see if you see differences like I did of when I left and when I came back into God's word. Make sure you see those differences, but see the differences of what that world offers versus that truth that we have and what that offers to see that way of life of difference and thinking of what the world has and what the truth has, especially this time that we live in with such crazy times that we're living in, especially now, the end of 2020 and an election year with all the elections around the world, like the world is getting more corrupt and we could see it. So getting in to see what the world has to offer versus getting into the truth and to see what scripture has to offer and just to make sure to dig it yourself, not just to hear what people say and to take it in, but to make sure to see it for yourself like I did to see the connections between the different books in the Bible, to see how they connect with each other and to see that this makes sense. This is an inspired book of truth. Justin, I've really, really enjoyed this opportunity to chat with you about your journey of discovery. So thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. And may God be with you as we await the return of our Lord Jesus Christ.